Hello and welcome to Hope City Accra online service. You're so welcome today. If you're new, be relaxed and be expectant for what God has for you today. We're so glad you're able to join us today. Kindly grab a pen and notebook and a Bible and be expectant for what God has for you today. Stay blessed. Come on. Get your boogie on this money for Jesus. It wasn't for nothing that you shed your blood So I'm gonna live like my shame is gone Won't be shocked to the way I walk I'm gonna live like my chains are gone, gone Now my sin is dead and gone And I sing hallelujah Come on Done, done Weapon that will overcome. I'm gonna shout like the battle's won. Fall back down because your time is up. I'm gonna live like the stone is gone. Gone. Now my sin is dead and gone. And I sing hallelujah. It's done. 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 darkness in you there is no shadow of turning so father we just lift you up in this moment we just lift you up we lift your name up we lift you up because there is no other God there is no other uh, being who's deserving of our praise God you are the highest you are the greatest you are the strongest everything we do father is about you and it's for you so, Father, we just lift you up in this moment. Thank you, Jesus.
goodness is running after, it's running after me. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm just going to share faith word this morning. And lately I've been reading Matthew. I've been kind of just taking it one bit at a time, one passage at a time. And uh, I was just reading Matthew 7, verses 24 to 27, and I read from NIV. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The stream, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. And this is really, I think, the situation that we find ourselves today, uh, find ourselves in today, I should say. And things around the world are pretty crazy. Things in our own lives can be crazy. And I often remark how quickly things have been moving since the beginning of this year. With the whole pandemic, everything has happened at church. Things have moved very quickly and it definitely feels like we're being battered on by life. Yes, storms of life, all the things that are happening around us. But Jesus said this for our sake. He told us that if we are founded, if our lives are founded on the rock, then everything's fine. Everything is not easy, but everything is fine because he's with us. And so I really want to encourage us this morning, wherever we are, whatever we're going through, to just put the words of the Lord into practice, to just stand on the things of the word, to put aside all the ideas we may have, to put aside all the things other people may say about us, to put aside all our thoughts and our desires for the future, but just stand on his word to stand on what he has said to us, to stand on what he calls us to. And I think that if we do this, we'll be able to not only weather the storms, but we'll also come, come out the other side triumphant. Because as he also said in the same passage, those that do not, those that do not fa- um, build their house on, on the rock, sorry, on, rather on sand, when the storm came and when the streams rose, the ruin of that house was great. And we don't want to fail. We don't want to end up falling into ruin. So I really just want us to be encouraged this morning and just kind of come back into the presence of the Lord and consistently do so no matter what we're going through because that is our foundation, the rock. And so let us pray this morning and now just pray for everybody right now. Father God, we thank you. We thank you because you're a good God. We thank you because you have everything in your hands. And all you ask of us, Lord God, is to obey you. It's to stand on what you've given us. You're not asking us, Lord God, to go out of our way to do extravagant things. You're not asking us, Lord God, to go above and beyond what we are capable of. You're simply asking us, Lord God, to be faithful, to be obedient, and to do your will no matter what happens. But God, we cannot do it alone. We want to do that, but we cannot do it alone. And therefore, God, we ask you to pour out your spirit on us once again, to help us, to bring us, Lord God, to move from our point where we are today forward so that we may grow, so that we may just sprout. In the same way, Lord God, plants after winter sprout and the leaves come out and the flowers bud. We want to be like that, God. We want to be renewed and we want to blossom. We thank you, God, this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello and welcome to Hope City Church. It's so great to have you on our online service this morning. We are one church in many locations and you are part of the best location online. Uh, Join us on YouTube and Instagram and our Facebook as well. Yes. Yeah. And a special welcome if you are new. And especially if you're new, say hi and leave a comment for our connection team online to get to you. Yes, uh, please leave a comment and connect with our church family because we are just not uh, a church, but we are a family. We don't do events, we do family and we'd like to connect with you out there to be part of our family. Yeah, 
and yes dinner party is on this wednesday and it's going to be amazing so please get on and our team online will connect with you awesome and i have an announcement i have an announcement i do have an announcement to share because it's going to be great um god willing church will be opening soon oh, yes yeah. yes more information will be shared and we'd love to keep you updated because we really can't wait to have you guys here we can't wait to physically worship together praise him together hear the amazing preach and connect with everyone so it's going to be great and we'll keep you updated yes this is so exciting yeah, i'm really best happy. announcement of the week <laughs> i'm really looking forward to when we open um yes how awesome uh, was last week preach, it guys? Was great. Like, it was how great. awesome was it? Like, it was I, I want to so hear great. you. Like, how awesome? Just indignation and anger. God gave us that emotion for a reason. It can come visit your heart. It can't reside there. It was so amazing last week, and uh, I really enjoyed the preach from Pastor Tim Ross. Yeah. It was um, it blew my mind, and it's something that I've, I'm holding on for the week. But there is more exciting thing coming. Wow. Pastor Daniel is bringing the fire. Yeah. And if last week was amazing, and I'm telling you, this week is going to blow your mind. Wow. So please grab a pen and a notebook and get yourself ready to yeah. absorb yeah. the words from great. God. It's going to be awesome. It's gonna be yes. Awesome. It's not really wait. Honestly. Ooh, uh, we're about to leave this camera. Like, do you want to leave? No. Can we just stay in? Okay, but we, but we have to, to leave. To the All right, okay so then. Great. We'll see you. So see you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Good morning, church. Um, we're about to enter into a time of offering. And I just want to encourage you in this moment not to switch off. This is still a significant moment, a holy moment. This is worship. I know sometimes when you're watching at home online, it's just very guilty to just kind of like, oh, it's offering and just switch off because you're not in a physical building where um, everyone's looking at you like, are you given? Um, but yeah, I just want to encourage you to be present that this is worship. I want to read a scripture from the book of Acts, um, Acts 20 verse 35. I'm going to read the Amplified Version. Um, and this is Paul speaking. It says, in everything I showed you by example, that by working hard in this way, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he said himself, it is more blessed, a greater joy to give than to receive. Um, when I read this, I immediately thought about all the things that we've been doing over the last year um, in terms of the things that we've been doing in-house in our community as a church family and then what we've been doing to a wider community in terms of Kickstarter and Lockdown Lookout and just the feedback that we've been getting from people just saying how much their life has been impacted and how much has been a blessing um, and it's been so encouraging and I just want to remind you that when you're given you're give, you're being you're part of something bigger than yourself you know one of the things that we emphasize at Hope City that we're all about community you're not just given to some random building you're given to one another we're serving one another and like I said the wider community and so your giving is significant um, and I just want to remind you that in this moment and like I said earlier this is worship unto the Lord and so um, let's testimony on this word and so be present in this moment as you give um, there are ways to give around the, the screen I'm sure as you can see um, and I'm just gonna pray very often right now so Heavenly Father, thank you um, for the opportunity to give. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you and serve you in this way, Lord. Thank you for um, that is a blessing to be able to give to others, to serve our community um, with our offering, to serve one another with our offering. I pray that you'll bless um, our giving right now, Lord Jesus, to do just abundantly and exceedingly more than we expect, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the blessings that you've given to this house, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
Oh! 
Good morning, church. So good to see you this morning on this, this beautiful Sunday morning. Let me introduce myself. My name is Daniel Maris. Um, I'm from the Netherlands and uh, I joined Hope City Church um, uh, a while back. I am uh, a teacher here uh, at a school. Uh, I moved here with my beautiful wife, my small daughter, and um, it's a great honor for me to uh, share the word of God with you this morning. So first of all, I want to thank all the guys that are here today with helping uh, this recording. They did an amazing job since we moved online. So wherever you are, just give them a, a warm applause for a few seconds. Put away your coffee. Yes, that's it. All right. These guys have done an amazing job. So thank you guys for that. Let me say a short prayer before I start um, the message for today. Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful new day. Lord, it's a day that you have made, and you have a plan and a purpose for this specific day, the 9th of August, 2020. Lord, I want to uh, bless your name, and I want to thank you for who you are uh, today, Lord, because your grace and your mercy is new today for us. Lord, help me to bring the words that you want me to bring uh, to ev for everybody who is watching today. Lord, thank you for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I was wondering, have you ever asked yourself the question, what is God wanting from me? Why did God plant me here in this church, in this country, in this life? Um, 
There was a guy in the Bible that asked that question. Uh, he was a Pharisee, a teacher, a Bible teacher. And most of the time, Jesus gave answers by telling a parable or asking another question. But actually, on this, this specific question, he gave a direct answer. It's great. And we read this in our core verse of today in Matthew 22. It will show up in the screen. Um, so let's read. It says, one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? The greatest. And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. How amazing is this? God is telling us here what the main purpose is of a Jesus follower. Love God, love yourself, and love others. And how brilliant is that? But how do we do that? I think the main thing about loving somebody is being in connection with that person. And when I was thinking about that, I, I had to think about a documentary I watched uh, a while back. And uh, this documentary was about something that is, its main purpose is to connect. And that's Legos. Legos, the small blocks, we all know them. There are like fake, fake ones in the, in the, in the world, but I, I'm talking about the real authentic Legos, like I have here. It says Lego eight times, so it's an official Lego block. These things are invented like 50 years ago, and how they are made, it's, it's remarkable. The, the molds they use, they are precise to two thousandths of a millimeter. And in the process, they, they make them, um, and only 18 out of a million are, like, not okay. They all get tested, and when they're not okay, they melt it again and reused. Two thousandths of a millimeter. These things are made to connect, and that's why they always connect. They always work, because their main purpose is to connect. And I want to use that Lego illustration today to look at this Matthew verse um, from Matthew 22. Because my point is, we are made to connect as well. Our main purpose is to connect with other people. We are not made to be solo. We are made to be in relationship with others, with God, with our neighbors, with our families. There are stories of, of babies who didn't knew any love and died from it. People need other people around them. That's our, our main purpose, being in a relationship. So, if we take a look at a Lego block, a Lego block can connect on a lot of different ways. A Lego block can have another Lego block on top of it, just as us. We need people to look up to. We need people to look up to and say, I want you to teach me. Like uh, uh, Timothy was taught by Paul. A Lego block can also connect beneath. We need people to, to lead ourselves. Maybe it's your children. Maybe you are a teacher like me. You have students in your class. Maybe it's someone who says, I, I, I like you so much, I want to learn from you. Maybe you have employees you want to lead. Those are people who connect to you and you are allowed to lead them. Maybe your entire life. Maybe just for a season. And the beautiful thing is, this is just a Lego block. But this Lego block comes into purpose when we put it into a big castle. It would be a green castle, a bit weird. But if we put it into a, to build a beautiful Lego castle, that's what it's made for. It's not made to be single. It's made to be put into a structure. Or a spaceship. Or a big truck. I don't know. But then you see the purpose of a Lego block. And so this is with us. It's exactly the same. When we put ourselves into a bigger structure, it can be your, your work, it can be church you will become more and more who God wants you to be. So, let's look at this verse from Matthew. It gives us three things. It gives us love God, love ourselves, which is a hard one, and love thy neighbor, love your neighbor. And I want to take a look at all three of those um, to see how, how do we do this? How can we do this? 
Well, first of all, the word love in the original language in Greek, in the New Testament, it uses the word agape, agape love. There are different kinds of love the where the Bible is speaking about. But this agape love is the most intense love. It is the love that Jesus showed us, giving us the perfect example, which he showed us when he gave his own life for us. He showed his agape love. Agape love means that you are not expecting anything in return from it. You just do it because you love the other one. And the interesting part is, it doesn't only say in Matthew, agape love God, but it also says agape love yourself and agape love your neighbor. How great is this? Luckily, God gave us the perfect ultimate example by giving his own life for us. So the first is, how do we love God? How do you love God? And that's maybe, I don't know if I can say the most easy one, but being in connection with God is making you love him. For example, I am married now for nine years already. Almost nine years. And me loving my wife isn't the same as being married to her. I don't know how it is in, uh, here in Ghana. I haven't been to a wedding yet. But in the Netherlands, it's just a few signatures. That is being married. Then you are married to the other one. Nobody asks you, do you really love that person? But it's just a few signatures. It's a formal act. But what makes my formal marriage with my wife into a loving, fruitful, and enjoyable marriage is me getting to know my wife, having a relationship with her, talk with her, spend time with her, laugh with her, cry with her, sharing my heart, my faults, my, my anxieties. That's what making the, the formal connection of the marriage, uh, uh, the marriage agreement into a fruitful marriage. And this is exactly the same with God. So this is two-way traffic. He showed his love for us 2,000 years ago. And we can show our love by thanking him. That's why I always start my prayer with, thank you, God, for who you are. Just for who you are. And do you know, actually, that God refers to his relationship with his church? And by the way, that's you. You are the church because the church is not a building where I am in now. The church are people. He refers to the church, the relationship with his church, um, with comparing it with a marriage. He is the groom. We are the bride. It's the perfect example of loving God. But now that second one, loving ourselves. How do I love myself? And I want to share two Bible verses with you who help us to understand how we can love ourselves. And the first one is in uh, Psalms, Psalms 139. It says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that fully well. I know that I am wonderfully made, and that's why I worship you. And the other one is just one Bible book um, uh, further in Proverbs, Proverbs 19. It says, who, uh, he who gains wisdom and, um, and good sense, he loves his own soul. So it gives, us, it gives me two ways to love myself, and it is to be in connection with myself, invest in myself, gain wisdom about myself, but also knowing who I am. Because knowing who I am, Psalm says, it says, I know that fully well, because I know I'm wonderfully made. Knowing who you are by reading the Bible, reading the scripture, um, worshiping God, and let God whisper to you, you are wonderfully made. That's how you can love yourself. And this is a hard one. And this is a hard one. I, I do realize that. And sometimes it's hard to love ourselves because we only see our flaws and our faults and our sins. But let me tell you, God doesn't change. He made you wonderfully and he doesn't make mistakes. You are wonderfully made. And you can love yourself. And sometimes it's, it's hard to realize, how can God love me? How can I love myself? I think it's even harder to see how God can love me. I'm now a father for just over a year. And I realized something just recently. There is nothing I wouldn't do for my daughter. Sometimes she annoys me. 
Sometimes she makes me laugh. But my love for her is, is so deep. And the Bible tells us that God's love for us is even deeper than the love of an earthly father or mother for his or her child. How amazing is that? And then loving your neighbor. The third part, loving God, loving myself, and then loving my neighbor, loving other people. How do we do that? And I wanted to use um, a story from the Bible, and this is in Luke. Um, and I will read four or five verses to, to share with you this story. It's a short story. It's about Jesus. On another Sabbath, he, that's Jesus, went into the synagogue and was teaching and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. I hope I pronounced that correctly. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, get up, stand in front of everybody. So he got up and stood there. I love the Bible sometimes. Just, he just did what Jesus said. Then Jesus said to him, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to destroy it? He looked around and then all, at them all. And then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he did so. And his hand was completely restored. This is an amazing story. And what I like about this story, it gives us two ways of not loving one another. Sometimes I love a story that shows you how to not do something. We see two groups of people here. First, the Pharisees, the Bible teachers. They are at the synagogue. The synagogue is the place where people gathered to worship, to, to study, study the, the scrolls, to uh, talk about who is God. But they were the teachers. They were supposed to lead. But why are they there? They are there to look for a reason to accuse Jesus. They are not there to worship. They are not there to pray. They are there to annoy Jesus, to see if they can find any fault in, in Jesus. And sometimes I, we feel that way. Sometimes I feel that way, that you're totally not in place, that maybe you feel more than another person. Maybe your pride is in the way. And that makes, you, uh, makes it difficult to love others. But then we have this man with his shriveled hand. And by law, he wasn't actually allowed to be in that synagogue. He was handicapped. He wasn't allowed in the synagogue. He was allowed around the synagogue, but not inside. So the teachers let him there to provoke Jesus, see if Jesus is going to do something. Sometimes I feel that way, like you're not in place. What am I doing in church? I haven't had any private Bible reading time this week. I, I haven't even said one prayer this week. What am I doing here worshiping? What about all my sins? What about my, my faults? You can, free, you can feel really not in place in church to, to connect to the church. This man was not in a place where he should be. It was his right hand. And just like here in Ghana, uh, that's your most important hand. And it was shriveled. This man was not able to connect into society. But people, this is what church is. And Jesus shows both people their place. He shows the Pharisees their place by actually not talking to them, but talking to the man. What is good to do? People should ask the teachers that. But he asked the man with the shriveled hand. He says, you know, you might be the teacher, but I want to connect with this man personally. How beautiful is that? And people, this is what church is. This is what our church today is. It's the body of Christ. The church is called the body of Christ here on earth. Love God, love people, and love yourself. I can only say let love lead. And to close this message, I want to ask you something. Because this is a strange season for us as a church. A lot is changing. We are going through a, a tough time, maybe. And I noticed there is something in this story that Jesus didn't say. 
Maybe you picked it up. He, he said some stuff to the man. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your imperfection. Let me help you. But there's something he did not say. And that's what, what makes it so, so amazing. I never read something about him saying to the Pharisees, go out. Be gone. I don't want you here. You're not supposed to be here. No, he doesn't say that. He sees their heart. He sees that in their heart, they are not there to worship. They are there for him, to annoy him. And he doesn't say to the man with a shriveled hand, go out by law, the law that my father gave to Moses, you are not allowed to be in here. No, he doesn't say that. Actually, he calls the man out from the side of the room to the center. Come here. I want to connect with you. Stretch out your hand. I want, to cure, I want to heal you. So he does not say, go out of here. He says, let's be connected. My question to you is, what is your choice going to be? Are you going to connect yourself to this church? I know when I speak through, um, uh, on behalf of the, the interim leadership team, we said, we are here to stay. We are here to build this church because we love this church. And by church, we mean the people. This is what we love and this is what we want to see flourish. We want to see all these different individual Lego blocks to come together to build this beautiful spaceship, which we can use to reach out to the community, reach out to each other's hearts, be a family together. And it was so good to hear the last few weeks messages that came in from you guys who told us we're praying for you. And we're in this. We're all in. We're going to go for it. Because we want this church to be here in Accra. And that's the fuel in our engine, really. Um, so thank you for that. And I think I speak on behalf of the entire team. And uh, please keep doing that. Keep us in your prayers because we want to connect with you and we want to build a spaceship together. We want to build this beautiful Lego art piece that is called Hope City Church Accra. And we want to be of, of significant meaning in this community. So my question to you is, what are you connecting to? Are you connecting to us as a church? And my challenge for you today is let's connect. Let's be together. Let's join your DP. Let's uh, send a message to, to the people in your DP. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. Let's connect. Even while we cannot connect physically right now, we can connect with each other. And when we will be back here in a short while, it's going to be a party. And we're going to connect even more. So what are you connected to? And I encourage you to think about that this week. We are here to stay. We are here to fuse all our Lego blocks together to make a beautiful thing here. Let us close in a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this morning. Lord, I want to thank you that we can love ourselves because you first loved us. You gave yourself to show the ultimate ultimate kind of love, the agape love for us. And Lord, thank you that we can come together now online and later physically, Lord, to build your church because you are building your church. You want your church to be built here in Accra. And thank you that we can all be a part of it, just like the first Corinthian letter says. We can all be part of this body, but one will be a hand, one will be a foot. Lord, help us to find out what our role is in building this church, this small part of your kingdom here on earth. Lord, because we want to build your church and we want to worship you. We want to build people here because we love you and because you first loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that brings us to the end of our service. We are so glad you could join us today. I hope you've been blessed by the message just as I have. Uh, feel free to reach out to us on any of our social media platforms and our online pastors will get in contact with you. If you're not part of a dinner party, we kindly encourage you to join any of our dinner parties. Send us a message and our online pastors once again will send you a message. 
and if you've been blessed really blessed by this message uh, we encourage you to give into this ministry via online or momo you find the details below on your screen thank you and see you next week bye bye